Good morning. Just when you get used to me being on time, <laughs> we've started uh, 9 o'clock in Immokalee on Sunday now. We are actually in a church, um, so we feel blessed for that. But I'm a little bit late, but better late than never. And we thank Cheryl, uh, who's filling in for Holly, who is ill. Um, we, th we thank you. I thank you very much personally, and the congregation thanks you. Glad to do it. I would say I promise the sermon will be short, but I can't promise that. <laughs> Sorry, nobody's laughing. <laughs> Let us begin with our first hymn, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Join me in Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. 
to him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, which is wisdom and strength and honor, blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts and give thanks for all your benefits and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for, which, for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. 
Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you did not know, and a nation that did, that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, about this time next year I will return and Sarah shall have a son. And not and not only so, but also when Rebecca had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of the works, but because of his call. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place. And the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Chief of sinners. 
as though I be. Jesus shed his blood for me. I that I might live on high, lives that I might never die, as the branches to the vine. I am his and he is mine. Oh, the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heavens above. Deeper than the depths of sea, lasting as eternity, love that found me wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Only Jesus can impart balm to heal the wounded heart. Peace that flows from sin forgiven, joy that lifts the soul to heaven, faith and hope to walk with God in the way that Enoch trod. Chief of sinners, though I be, Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to him are known, all my sorrows are his own. He sustains the hidden life, safe with him from earthly strife. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. And yes, I used that gospel lesson twice. But last week, that was with the uh, Vacation Bible School. This lesson was in the pericope. But no worry, because I'm not preaching on the gospel lesson. (laughs) We live by the law. We rely on a rule of law within society to have an ordered society, right? We play by the rules, we call out the cheaters. We believe in cause and effect. We look for principles and laws that allow us to understand, predict, and to some measure gain control over things. The law keeps things together and in line. Without Newton's law, there's no physics. Without the universal constants, there is no universe. And as we've discovered in most recent times, without laws and enforcement of those laws, there is no ordered society. The law is so much a part of our lives that the gospel, the good news of God's grace in Christ, undeserved, unmerited forgiveness, love to the loveless, grace to the undeserving, is a strange and foreign language. You can't run a business, a family, a corporation, a society on grace. The old Adam is always going to try to take advantage each and every time. The problem comes and we take the horizontal rules and we try to run them vertically. So the horizontal for us on earth, horizontal with, or vertical with God. We try to mix them up. The law works horizontally for men. But the law does not work vertically before God. That was the problem with Israel. 
Israel tried to live by the law before God rather than by grace through faith in the promise. So what happened? When the promise God made to Israel came true, when Israel's Messiah, Jesus Christ, came, most of the Jewish people rejected him. Here was pure grace, and Israel clung to the law. For the Apostle Paul, the issue is deeply personal. It is likely that it involved his family. Very members of his family. He speaks of his great distress, his anguish of heart, his sorrow over the fellow Israelites, his brothers, according to the flesh. Religiously speaking, they had it all. They had the Torah, the law, the prophets, the promises, the covenants, the worship. Status as God's favored nation, his chosen people, the apple of his eye. And yet they did not believe. Paul was willing to be damned in their place. If that were possible. Paul says, for I wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. But that's not possible or necessary. Christ has already done that. It would seem as though the word of God had failed to deliver the goods. The seed had failed to sprout. The word returned empty. The gospel, which Paul called the power of God to salvation to both Jew and Greek, seemed to fail in the synagogue. But that's simply not the case. Faith is not hereditary. Most of you know that from experience. Christian parents don't necessarily bring up Christian children. We bring them to baptism. We bring them to church, often against the protest of the old Adam. We teach them, and yet many don't wish to stay with it. Like the Israelites, they had gifts, but faith didn't appear to take hold. Or if it did, it withered like a seedling in shallow soil or was choked by the weeds of the world. Paul's way of expressing this is revealing. Not all Israel is Israel. Taking an Ancestry.com and tracing test and tracing your genetics back to Abraham does not make you an Israelite. To underscore this, Paul reminds us of Abraham's two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael was the legal firstborn of Hagar, Sarah's servant. He was entitled to the inheritance of the firstborn. The law said so. But Ishmael was conceived out of unbelief. Trusting in the law of fertility over that outrageous promise of God. That a barren woman in her 90s could receive and bear a son. The promised seed of salvation did not fall upon Ishmael but Isaac, the son of the promise. The son born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age. God throws out the rule book and runs things by grace. Faith in the promise, not the laws of biology. The same holds for our Lord in his incarnation. A virgin conceived and bore a son. That violates everything you learned about the facts of life. <laughs> a virgin bearing a son. Doesn't make sense. But God doesn't say by the law. God doesn't even act according to the law. 
He throws out the law and does his own gospel thing where old women and virgins conceive by the word and sinners are justified for the sake of Jesus. His suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. Ishmael and Isaac remind us that salvation is not hereditary. We must be second born in order to, receive, in order to be children of the promise. Remember Jacob and Esau? Rebekah was carrying twins, and no one knew it. Before the twins were born, before they had a chance to do anything good or bad, in order that the world would understand that God operates by grace and not by the law, God revealed to Rebekah that he had chosen Jacob over Esau, the second born over the firstborn. Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This was before Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. Or before Jacob tricked his blind father into blessing him as the firstborn. Why? In order that God's promise of election might continue. Not because of works but because of him who calls. In a word, grace. Does this mean that Jacob was saved and Esau was damned? Should almost kind of sit here and wait for an answer. (laughs) Does this mean that God elects some to be saved and others are damned? No, Christ came to be the savior of the world, not select portions of the world. This is where our love for rules and principles betrays us. We read these verses in Romans in terms of eternal election to salvation, whereas Paul is actually speaking of temporal selections, selection in salvation history. It's like a play where everyone gets assigned a part Some play the good guys, some play the villains, some are background actors, but they are all essential in the plot. Esau is is as important as salvation history as Jacob. Ishmael is as important as Isaac. And even if Ishmael and Esau weren't the sons born of the promise, didn't have the roles in salvation history to be in the line of Christ, if they believed in the promise, they were just as surely saved. Esau and Ishmael are reminders that God works through grace and not the law, and that salvation is not about what you do, but about what God does in Christ. Jacob and Esau remind us that God's election is grace, gift, without any merit or worthiness in us. And again, to be treated as firstborn, we must be second. Born from above by water and spirit. What role in salvation history do you wish to play when the casting call comes? Do you want the part of Ishmael or Isaac, Esau or Jacob, Pharaoh or Moses, Adam or Christ? Do you want your life to be an example that encourages others to believe? Or one that's a warning to others of the perils of resisting grace? That you and I are here this morning, alive, upright, breathing, taking in food, gathered in God's name, hearing the word. And receiving the gifts of Christ is entirely gift, 
grace. You are destined to be here just as you were destined in Christ for salvation. Before the foundations of the world. You can no more boast about being here and believing than clay can boast about becoming a vase or a cup. The potter did this, not the clay. But so many places are, people are boasting about their works, about what they did, and not what Christ has done for them. This sermon might be a little irritating to some. But we need to proclaim this because this is the pure word of God of what he has done in Christ Jesus. Not about what we have done. If it's all about us, why did Christ die? So what about Israel, which brought Paul so much anguish to heart of heart? Consider it a work in progress. How are you doing? In your walk with God. Why are you here? If not because you're a work in progress and you want to hear God's word, receive his gifts to strengthen and preserve you. Israel, a majority were hardened. A remnant believed. That's how it went in Old Testament Israel. The same is true in the church. When times get tough, as they're becoming now, many are hardened and fall away. But there's always a faithful remnant. Now, you guys know we lost our building in Immokalee. We finally worshiped in a church in the first time in, I think, two months. We were worshiping in a park. Sometimes when times get tough, people fall away. But there's always a remnant. And we thank God for that. And we thank God how he works through his word. In those who believe. Times are getting tough now. But there will always be a remnant. And God uses even unbelief. For his own good and gracious purpose to save. Does that make sense to you? (laughs) He uses unbelief to save. He will use all for his glory. Everything. The hardening, hardening of Israel meant... A place for the Gentiles and Abraham's family tree. And if a wild branch, that's the Gentiles, read about the Gentiles in the Bible. Go through a little bit of history. They were wild. <laughs> go, to, go to Israel. They were wild, untamed. But now they're grafted. Because you know who those wild Gentiles are? (laughs) It's us. I don't know if we have any Israelites in here. (laughs) But that's us. But we're grafted into the Israelite rootstock. And it's much easier to restore native wood. It's like when they do an orange tree and they graft it on a good stock. Because the roots on what they need to grow aren't good. So they grafted in. And we have been grafted in. 
We are children of the promise. We, in fact, are the Israelites, in a way. Watch and see what he does in our day. He's winnowing, he's refining, he's calling, he's doing his master potter thing, forming our clay into the image of his son. Have you ever done pottery? Anybody ever done pottery? You've done pottery? What do you start with? What does the clay look like when you throw it on the wheel? A blob. A blob. Is it pretty? Is it have a shape? Is it like, oh, that is beautiful? No. I haven't done a lot of pottery, but it just looks like a blob. And what does it look like when you're done? What do you come up with after you? A cup or a plate or a bowl or? And then the more it's formed, because I've seen them kind of use their hands and they kind of lift it up and it just finally takes shape. What do you think God's doing with us? He is the potter, we are the clay. So if you don't remember anything else, we started as a blob. <laughs> but he's working on us, so we are, have, uh, use a pretty piece of pottery, you know? And the more he works on us, and he'll be working on us until he comes, the prettier we are. Use that analogy. Because of what he is doing, not because of what we're doing. We're just kind of laying there. He is working in us through his word, through baptism, through holy communion, receiving his body and blood. The very body and blood of our Lord and Savior who suffered and died on the cross. Salvation is through faith in the promise of Christ. <coughs> Not by works of the law. You are my beloved son, the father said at Jesus' baptism. You are my beloved son, he said, in your baptism. Join to Christ in baptismal faith. You are born into the right side of salvation history. The Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus side. Amen. I did kind of tell you it wasn't going to be actually short. <laughs> Let us rise for the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, your steadfast love is gracious and overflowing. 
Teach your people to look to you in every need, to be thankful for everything that you give them, and to know that no danger, trouble, or hardship can ever separate them from your love in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given us your church. Bless all pastors and church workers in their service to us in your name. And bless those now considering and preparing for church work. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your son miraculously fed the 5,000 and satisfied them. We thank you for all you provide to support our bodies and lives. Make us content with what you give, that we may not covet or turn elsewhere for what comes from your hand alone. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are richly and daily surrounded with your love and care. Give us eyes to see your mercies new every morning. And grant us grateful hearts that we, may re- that we have received, we may generously share with the needy and your church. Lord, in your mercy. Father, daily you bless us with abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, Congress, our governor, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. (coughs) Father, visit us in your compassion. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their affliction, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. Especially we pray for Edison, Bob, Elsie, Alan, Terry, Gary, Bella, Holly, Nova Ray, who was brought into your family through holy baptism this last week. And we pray for all those that we name in our hearts. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your steadfast love and mercies are forever. But our faith is daily tested and tempted. Give us strength and endurance that we may not despair, but have confidence. And that what we find within the body and the bread and the wine, that it is your true body and blood to strengthen and preserve us. Let us receive that by faith with confidence. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, let us seek you where you may be found. You in the day of salvation and be prepared by your mercy for the day of judgment. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the empty host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and solitary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he gave, broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take, drink, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood shed for the forgiveness of all your sins as often as you do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, and given us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We take away the sin of the world. Mercy. Take away 
Let's rise and thank our Lord for what he has done for us. Hold on. Here we go. The Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. church shall stand even when steeples are falling from both have spires in every land bell still are chiming and calling calling the young and old to rest but above all the soul's distress, longing for rest everlasting. Early in temples made with hands, God the Most High is not dwelling. High above earth, his temple stands, all earthly temples excelling. Yet he who dwells in heaven above chooses to live with us in love, making our bodies his temple. We are God's house of living stones, built for his own habitation. He through baptismal grace us owns, heirs of his wondrous salvation. Where we but to his name to tell, yet he would deign with us to dwell, with all his grace and his favor. Here stands the font before our eyes, telling how God has received. Sacrifice.
sacrifice and what his supper here gives us. Here's some the scriptures that proclaim Christ yesterday, today the same, and evermore our Redeemer. Grant that, O oh God, your will be done, that when the church bells are ringing, and he in his message is bringing. I know my own, my own knows me. Do not the world my face shall see. My peace I leave with you, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious on you. The Lord look down upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Couple announcements. Uh, flowers are given by our pianist, Cheryl Nelson, in, in memory of her husband. Uh, birthdays today, uh, Judy Hendricks, uh, Carrie Stecklin, and Debbie Jacko, I don't think they're here today, but let's, unless I'm missing, let's sing happy birthday to them. Birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear friends, happy birthday to you, God's blessings on you, God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear friends. God's blessings on you. At two anniversaries, uh, Carol and Sam of 31 years, and Lori and Noel of 38 years. <clears throat> Stay for food and fellowship. Um, Steve has brought refreshments. Plus, we have uh, hot dogs and hamburgers, so if you don't want to go out to lunch, you don't have to. So a lot, a lot of food. Um, Bible study today, we're in uh, Disc 2 of the Bible, Chapter 13. And also uh, Sunday School today with uh, Linda. Wednesday's Bible study this next week. You can't talk? I'll do one this week. We're, uh, we're going to start uh, Exodus. So we will, we will start Exodus and maybe we'll go back to Noah a little bit, a little bit later. Anything I'm missing? All is quiet. Again, we welcome our guests and please, please join us for refreshments. Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>